Okay, you guys, it's now 7.16 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. It is still May 20th, 2011. Uh, it's f freaking fantastic Friday. Um, <coughs> yes, I'm finally a little bit more awake. My voice is still kind of... <coughs> kind of weird. I don't know. Pollen count must be a little elevated. Anyway, um, now that I am fully awake and was able to review stuff from last night. Oh crap. I keep thinking everything is backwards in camera land. Oh. I wanna I wanna do this, you know, I wanna just kick back. Um I I, I vaguely remember now I didn't watch all the clips from last night. That's gonna take me forever. Because I talk too damn fucking much, but uh, I uh, I vaguely recall that I was talking about mind control, LSD, um, MK Ultra, that sort of thing, you know. And for years, I'm, people thought MK Ultra was a conspiracy theory. If you ever watched the movie, um, if you ever watched the movie Conspiracy Theory with uh, Mel Gibson and Julia Roberts? Uh, you guys, that movie's all true. Okay. The government does have uh, lone assassins and also uh, uh, mass murderers, mass assassins, and uh, stuff like that. Um, the CIA is all about covert, crazy, sneaky shit, okay? They are the jackals, if you will. Um, um, <laughs> they are the bandersnatch. Okay. If you followed the Alice in Wonderland, uh, uh, the whole Alice in Wonderland uh, uh, analogy that I used for this whole rabbit hole thing, um, the CIA is the Bandersnatch. So, just to let you guys know. Because um, the CIA, they don't fuck around. Now, when I was a kid, I thought it would be just uber glamorous. And this is before I realized that the CIA was really, you know, this badass because I was only 10. I thought, well, hell, you know, I could work for the CIA. Yeah, to hell with being a writer. I could just be a spy. How romantic, how freaking just dangerous. Ooh, be like Mata Harry. Mata Harry was like my, <coughs> you know, before before I realized how hot Jul uh, uh, Angelina Jolie was. Well, no, she's not hot anymore. She's freaking scrawny. It's gross. She needs to get her curves back. But, um, before, um, before I had even heard of Angelina Jolie, Mata Hari was my hero. She was a, <coughs> she was a spy. And, uh, damn good one. She was also, she also, her cover was, was that she was a dancer. Uh, and this was in the 1920s. And, uh. You know, they're going to make you think that Mata Hari was a myth, made up person. She wasn't a made up person, she was 100% real. Um, she was an exotic dancer. Uh, a stripper, if you will. I mean, come on, let's get real. But I prefer exotic dancing because, uh, you know, yes, it's, it's soft language, but it's because um, I, I actually have no problem with exotic dancing. I, uh... I don't see it as degrading to women, because women choose that for whatever reasons they have, and their reasons are individual, personal, and totally valid. There's nothing wrong with it. Some women do it because they like shaking their ass. More power to you, you shake that thing. You shake what your mama gave you. Some people do it to get through college, and hey, college loans are a bitch. So, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Some people, like my uh, my aunt-in-law, whom I had never met, but I just know was just a wonderful person. Based on what uh, <coughs> people in my uh, on my mother-in-law's side of the family have told me, she's a she was a wonderful person. That spark of life. She's one of those uh, one of those shooting star people that you know are only on Earth for a short amount of time, and then they have to go but they make a difference in a lot of people's lives. Anyway, um, 
you know, she was an exotic dancer. She had four kids, and she was putting her ass through college. You gotta do what you gotta do. You know, she was damn good at it, and she didn't, uh, she didn't work in sleazy places. She worked in places that were very, uh, on the up and up, uh, past their codes and whatnot, and, you know, it was, she, she was a, she was a sophisticated dancer. You know, so, mad props to her. Anyway, that being said, um, <sighs> I'm trying to remember what my point was because I didn't have one. Yes. Now, um, anybody who is a survivor of any type of abuse, any kind of abuse, I don't care what it is, verbal, emotional, physical, um, psycho psychological, uh, sexual, um, which sexual abuse actually encompasses all of the abuses combined. Um, verbal, I think I might have said that one already. Any kind, anything that tears you down in one, in one way or another, that tries to break your spirit. If you're a survivor of that, I know you can relate to what I'm saying. You know, and I can wax on saying, you know, we're survivors, we're strong. You know, don't fuck with us anymore. We're hip to your games. You know, because that's... That's kind of the mentality that you get after being a survivor for so many years, is y you get fucking tough. You get tough, you get rough, you don't give a shit. You pretty much, uh... You pretty much turn into badasses. That's kind of where I am right now. Because I'm a mother, I got two babies, I'm very protective. I'm a mama bar when it comes to my babies, because I love them with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. Anybody, anybody, anybody even looks so much as look cross-eyed as my, at, my, at one of my babies. And they even have an inkling of a thought in their head of abusing my babies. Killing them would be the last thing I would fucking do. They'd be begging for me to take their life, and I'd be like, no, I ain't done with you yet. I'm a badass, very protective bitch when it comes to my children. And if you're a mother or a father, but especially a mother because I'm a female, so I gotta relate to, you know, my gender. If you're a mama and you're watching this, I know you can relate. I know that you're like, oh, hell yeah, girl. Anybody try to touch my babies, they're dead. It's, it's, it's that instinctual protective nature that us humans being mammals first and humans second, we all have. Whether we're black, white, green, purple, polka dotted, striped, plod. Well, I've never seen anybody with plod skin, although that would be fucking awesome, wouldn't it? You know, I don't care what you are. You know, I don't care what label society wants to put on you and throw you in some little fucking group. Like, oh, all, per all you know, flying purple people eaters over here. You gotta sit over here. You can't sit there. Fuck that shit. We're all mammals. But I know you can relate. Oh, hell no. And, I, and there's a lot of daddies out there, too, that are very protective, too. My dad's very protective of me. He did what he could. You know, he just had never taken care of a kid before, so, I mean, it's trial and error, so. You know, that and a lot of, sh you know, a lot of the shit really wasn't my father's fault because the perpetrator basically had ensnared my parents and uh, convinced them that they could be trusted. So, that being said, I gotta wrap this up. <coughs> got about five minutes. My point is this, um, you know, we're all survivors on this mortal coil, whether we're survivors of abuse or just survivors of life, okay? Life sucks. Life is hard. Life is pain. Anyone that's telling you differently is trying to sell you something. Quote from Princess Bride. It's true. Life sucks. Life is just one shitstorm after another. Get a raincoat, get an umbrella, it's gonna be a duty out there. Okay? It's pretty much what it what it, what it is. You know, 
But you have to arm yourself, you have to protect yourself, you have to be on guard, be on point, be on a lookout. Because you never know what kind of shit's going to fly at you. And if you have children, I know you love them with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. Just like I love mine with all my heart, mind, body, and soul. And you're going to want to try to protect them from the bullshit that's going to fly at them. You don't want them to get, you know, jaded by the world yet. Although trials and tribulations do make you stronger in the end you don't want your babies to get hurt that's your instinct is to protect them you know but being a survivor of every kind of single type of abuse imaginable makes me one hell of a fucking badass bitch I don't tolerate bullshit anymore I am what you call, I am what you call a, hard, a hardcore mama. I'm not Roseanne by any fucking means, because that woman was was downright almost abusive. Okay? I love my babies. They know I love them. And they love me, and I know they love me. It's solid. In fact, my daughter woke up last night. I'll say this real quick, and then I have to, I have to, you know, pause and come back because I have to get my kids. Well, my I get my have to get my son dressed because my daughter doesn't have school on Fridays. But uh, I uh, <sighs> my daughter had gotten up in the middle of the night. Well, it was shortly before I went to bed, probably around eleven thirty, twelve, somewhere around there. She got up. She had to go potty. You know, so John let her out, she went potty, she, she went back in her room, and she's all like, Daddy, about the door, you know, telling Daddy, you know, close the door. I keep the door locked because my daughter sometimes likes to sleepwalk, so, you know, but she was exhausted from playing, playing her little heart out at the park, so I didn't have to worry too much about it, but uh, I was just like, John, don't worry about it, I'll go get her. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. So I got up, and... You know, tucked her back in, gave her a kiss, rubbed her, rubbed her little back, stroked, you know, caressed her cheek, you know, gave her kisses, and she's like going like this. She's like, "Mommy," I'm like, "Yes, yes, sweetheart, what's the matter?" She's like, "I love you." I'm like, "Oh, I love you too, baby girl." You know, and I was like, "You get some good sleep, so I'm, I love you." I was like, "You're my baby." I was like, you're my angel, aren't you? And she's like, mm-hmm. You know, already just about to pass out, which you know she's tired when she does that. You know, and as I, you know, I put my head down on her pillow and just looked at her and was like, I have the most beautiful girl in the world. Thank you, God. Because I do that at least once a day. Or I look at each of my children and I'm just like, thank you, whoever's up there that decided that I was going to be a mom because... I can't imagine my life without them. I really can't. They brought so much joy and happiness to my life and taught me so much about life that I don't know what I'd do without them. I'd probably lose my mind. And then I got up, you know, because I was starting to fall asleep myself. And I was like, oh, I gotta go to bed. And I, uh, <coughs> getting ready to get up, and she's like, Mommy, again. And I'm like, Yes, dear. I'm like, Yes, baby doll. She's like, I love you so much. And that was it. She was down for the count. She was out like a light. I was like, oh. So, you know, I love my children. But at the same time, they're overwhelming to me. Their energy levels are just so astronomically holy crap high that it wears me out. So a lot of times I'm like, I love you, but give me some space. I love you. Go play. You know, let me kind of chill for a minute. I'm getting overwhelmed here. Oh, my fingers are tingly. Ooh. But um, that's pretty much it. Because I must get my children, my, my son up at least. So, part two will be coming up. Maybe later, maybe not. I don't know. But you guys, you guys stay funky. And uh, always remember... Don't let fear paralyze your ass. Get up and move.